cruelties of slavery resulted in immeasurable trauma inflicted upon enslaved people. Slaveholders weaponized their power over bondsmen any way they could in order to maintain control. One of the most powerful tools used, particularly against women, was the threat of family separation. Because slaveholders often measured the value of enslaved women in terms of their fertility, this was a cruel irony. Each healthy enslaved baby born increased the wealth of the slaveholder and gave leverage over the mother. Under the best of circumstances, pregnancy can cause worry and stress. In the case of expectant mothers who were enslaved, this concern was overshadowed by a cold fear. If the pregnancy was the result of forcible violence, as was often the case, this fear was compounded. Acknowledgement of a free white man as father of an enslaved child could bring uncertainty. The child could be met with favor or banishment. Family separation was always on the table. Many slaveholders traded bondsmen for unpaid debt or quick cash, often with little or no warning. When this surprise separation occurred, the child was left with a void where a mother's love should have been, cast into a new environment, often unprepared. Mothers were left with empty arms, worry, and sorrow. No matter how great her love, an enslaved mother could never fulfill a mother's obligation to protect a child who was another's property. In desperation, some enslaved women took what little control they had, choosing to end the life of their child as opposed to surrendering them to a life of suffering under enslavement. The act of a mother taking the life of her infant or young child was not unusual among enslaved people. Pain was ever-present, and in some cases, urgency forced the mother's hand. Freedom seeker Margaret Garner made this anguished decision during an 1856 escape attempt shortly after crossing the frozen Ohio River. When her family's hiding spot was discovered, she made the desperate choice to take their lives before they could be returned to slavery. She succeeded in the case of her two-year-old daughter. Despite the notoriety of her story, her act of desperation was not the first, nor would it be the last. It's impossible to know how many other enslaved women were forced to make such a choice. In the mid-19th century, infant and child mortality rates were high, which meant these deaths often escaped scrutiny. When an enslaved child died at the hand of the mother, it was only news when this act was discovered. In 1834, the same year Margaret Garner was born, two separate enslaved mothers in Garner's birthplace, Boone County, Kentucky, took this painful path. It was reported that one enslaved mother took the lives of her two young children. Another killed her newborn. Local newspapers reported these deaths as a trend. The following year, an enslaved woman in Boone County named Elvira took the life of her infant. For her crime, Elvira was tried and hanged in the public square. Her plight drew sympathy from newspapers in neighboring Indiana, and sadly, it was reported her hanging drew crowds from locals. Acts of infanticide by enslaved mothers was seen in drastically different ways, colored by attitude and the politics of the day. Proponents of slavery went on defensive, framing the act as proof of the violent nature of enslaved people. This was used to dehumanize enslaved women, shifting focus from enslavement itself. During the trial of Margaret Garner, abolitionist Lucy Stone visited the mother in jail and later testified on her behalf. Weeks after the trial, Stone commented on the fate of Margaret's child, judging her at better liberty with God than slavery with man. 
Abolitionists like Stone saw this as an act of pure selflessness. A mother left without choice, trapped by slavery's cruelty. Born of desperation, the act of an enslaved mother taking her child's life can be attributed to both maternal protection to spare the child further harm while offering the mother a chance to control the destiny of the child. Her legacy is one of sacrifice and resistance. <laughs>